and the morphology. Dear chairman, dear colleagues, so let's continue. Letter to my topic. I'd like to touch upon the morphological classification and diagnostics of non-muscular invasive uh, tumors because the overwhelming majority, 85-90% uh, of all bladder tumors belongs to this category. So what is a non-muscular invasive bladder tumor? This is uh, TA and T1 stage of tumor with invasiveness and with the, the invasiveness into the mucous membrane. We should differentiate these two types because they have um, absolutely a different uh, therapeutic treatment and clinical treatment. So the goal of uh, every classification is the definition of uh, groups that are di differentiated um, as for the clinical progress and course of disease. Uh, the classification should be uh, reproductive ones and it should be understood by clinicians and morphologists on equal basis. There are huge uh, num there is a huge number of different classifications of bladder tumors, and two are the main ones: the classification of 1983 and 2004, with some additions that were introduced in 2016. In uh, 1973, there was a simple classification that defined a papilloma and papillomic tumor cancer with three stages of uh, plas plasia. And um, this is the diagnosis of a malignant tumor. There were three different types differentiated um, according to this classification. And as you can see, there is no uh, specific criteria why we um, think that this uh, tumor belongs to this category. It is quite useful for morphologists uh, because we just uh, write G2 or G3 as it is convenient for us. Uh, nevertheless, it uh, had some importance and significance for the clinical picture and in many, prot uh, many protocols are uh, based on that classification. And uh, then some time passed and in nine. 1998, uh, the Society of uh, Urologists and WHO put forward another scheme which is based on a uh, different principle. In 1999, WHO suggested a new classification scheme. It repeated the previous one of the previous year, but the difference was that uh, the tumors were divided into three categories um, according to the degree of its malignancy. Uh, for a long time, they discussed this classification schemes. A lot of conferences were held uh, in order to discuss these topics. They discussed whether these uh, schemes can be uh, useful and also whether these criteria are useful and uh, which of them can be reproduced in a most efficient way and whether um, a low malignancy uh, tumor can be considered a carcinoma or not or is it possible to transform one classification scheme into another one and which of uh, the schemes uh, has more significance in terms of uh, uh, these uh, classification features in uh, 20 uh, in um, 2004 they uh, elaborated a new classification that was adopted it repeated the classification scheme of 1998 that was worked out by the Society of uh, uh, Europathologists and WHO. So the basic principles of this scheme are, so it is based on the following, on molecular and genetic changes that uh, take place in uh, certain types of tumors. I will not go deep into details about these uh, changes, but they are reflected in morphological uh, picture, and we see the morphological uh, signs in the microscope and then they fall into this or that category. The tumors were divided into genetically stable tumors, 
these are the low malignancy tumors and the tumors with uh, uh, a huge number of uh, genetic alteration that is the high malignancy tumors each of these uh, categories can be a flat one or a papular one this classification scheme allows uh, you to avoid uh, any uh, duplication and uh, there are no interim um, types and categories. A new classification uh, category, the papular tumor, was introduced and it should not, should not be assessed as a carcinoma. Uh, the genetically instable non-invasive tumors uh, have the same uh, genetic alterations. Uh, do uh, can we uh, make the transformation of such um, tumors? Papilloma just remained as it was. So the G1 category uh, was transformed, so it fell out of all these categories, and it was included into the category of uh, carcinoma uh, high. Uh, gray uh, in into the low grade carcinoma G2 low grade and part of it was uh, included into the high grade so it was divided into two types and G3 uh, belonged to high grade carcinoma genetically stable processes flat ones uh, hyperplasia and uh, the dysplasia the popular one so we will discuss all these categories in detail uh, uterine uh, hyperplasia uh, this is a thick uh, mucous membrane of uh, the bladder but without um, signs of uh, cytological uh, atopy and we uh, find uh, this um, together with um, uh, tumors of uh, low grade of malignancy. It does not have any huge malignant potential, though the genetic analysis showed that it can be considered as the low grade malignancy, but there is one but. So when assessing such states, we should know the medical history of a patient. If um, in their medical history they have the capillary uh, um, tumor after the uh, resection and chemotherapy of the bladder, then, uh, especially if it, it is a capillary hyperplasia, uh, it should be considered like a recurrence of a disease. And as for um, the atopy, we see that the changes are due to the reactive uh, processes that take place in the um, uh, tumor. And here, ureterial dysplasia is uh, a flat tumor, and uh, it is identical to capillary uh, tumors of a low-grade malignancy. Just look at this state it is a progressive state so it can progress uh, to tumor in 15 20 percent of cases but uh, we do not uh, uh, often see um, the isolated form of it uh, it progressive into the papillary uh, cancer normally that is what we see when we cannot understand the reason of the atopy, whether it is due to inflammation, infiltration, or it is a dysplasia. Uh, it's difficult to understand that um, based on um, histological microslide, and we think that it is a kind of a localized dysplasia, a uh, proterial papilloma, that is a tumor that consists of a thin uh, fibra uh, vascular basis and surface. The key words, uh, it is very similar to a normal one. And that is uh, the term that was coined in uh, 1960. So the diagnosis of uh, uretral uh, papilloma with uh, some 
in situ carcinoma is no right for existence so just forget these words and never use them again this is a tumor that we encounter in very rare cases though uh, in some cases we face some diffuse uh, papilloma it's, we have also a benign a tumor with the invertive character. Here we can have uh, minimum signs of atopy, but if the atopy exists there, then it is not a genial um, tumor. Uh, it was first described in 1927, then they forgot about it until 1963. Some researchers paid attention to it. So this tumor is localized in little triangle and symptoms um, can be um, also linked to the obstruction. In microscopic, we see a flat surface and uh, unchanged ureteri uh, is seen here. And we should not forget that the inverted papilloma uh, can be combined with uh, the ordinary one. And then we encounter the inverted growth and it is highly treated and it uh, it does not require any specific chemotherapy and uh, also a papilloma of a low grade of malignancy that is a specific category it was argued about whether um, it can exist or not uh, but it's still in it is still included into the classification that is a tumor that uh, also um, reminds us of a normal uh, tumor and if we uh, translate that into um, to normal language uh, this is a papilloma with a very thick uh, ureterium layer. We see a very um, well-defined uh, contour, and that is a very characteristic picture of such type of a tumor. And uh, the prognosis, and I would like to mention, dear colleagues, that it is a very rare diagnosis, such a low-grade malignancy tumor, uh, is a very rare case. So when we have the octomy of this tumor, only then we can make a diagnosis because the biopsy cannot show that for, uh, cannot definitely show it. Uh, the atopy is um, manifested in a moderate way and this um, tumors can be a multi-centered uh, ones and they are very prone to recurrences as for progressing and the death rate are lower than 5% and this patients need to be monitored because there is a high probability of recurrence like three-fourths of patients can suffer recurrences and recurrences can happen um, for a long period of time uh, so the internal bladder chemotherapy decreases the probability of recurrences in future uh, the, we can see here the um, Pathfinder layer, and uh, it can be lost in an artificial manner. Genetically instable processes, uh, the list is very short. Uh, carcinoma in situ and popular high grade can cancer, but these are very dangerous states. Now, the high grade of malignancy cancer can be diagnosed very quickly. Uh, so uh, there are some cell ATPs that are uh, reflected uh, during the research, but not uh, always we have such a picture, such a clear picture, and sometimes uh, uh, we face some ambiguity, but we should have a uh, um, look at the nuclear and uh, metosis so if uh, um, we have this type of cancer there uh, metosis can be found at all layers and uh, the research can uh, help us to uh, make this uh, high grade cancer diagnosis and pathological expression
uh, is also quite evident on the Pathfinder uh, zone and uh, uh, Leia. And P53 uh, is positive, and uh, uh, key I67 is always, uh, almost always positive. So you have to pay attention to the localization of uh, uh, cells, so they can be found in any lamb. As for classification of WHO of 1967, there was a clarity uh, when we find the heterogenic uh, tumors, what should we do? And uh, w for example, we can have high grade and low grade uh, structure in one tumor. So what should we do in such a case? We have such figures in classification. Some of them think that 5%, some of them think that 10% uh, should be considered as a, a high-grade carcinoma. But that is your choice. Uh, there is no specific exact figure for that. However, mixed tumors are less aggressive than uh, pure carcinomas of high grade of malignancy. So when uh, you respond to that, you should reflect different types of structures. Another clarification of uh, 2016. Finally, they have introduced one more category we did not know. Uh, what to do with this category. So the papular inverted papilloma with invasive cancer. It is a very hard category to be diagnosed and uh, there are no stroma re there is no stroma reaction there. If it is a high grade of uh, malignancy, we understand that it is a cancer and uh, uh, we should define whether there is uh, uh, the uh, genial invasive there and um, you are just prompted to put T1 uh, carcinoma is the diagnosis, but you should pay a special attention to a stroma reaction, and it can be an inflammable reaction or other types of uh, uh, reactions. The, this is a Papilla, um, papilloma uh, cancer that reminds us of uh, inverted papilloma but if it is a low grade cancer it is very difficult to perform the analysis and to define its specific type and uh, we can also face the problem of uh, uh, the nucleus atopy here as well. But uh, they do not have the invasion into the muscular layer in this type. Uh, carcinoma in situ in 1952, uh, Malikov described that that is a flat uh, uh, type of carcinoma because um, in the majority of uh, uh, cases is a multifocal state and uh, uh, in, at primary stage we can detect one to three percent of such tumors because uh, the majority of patients do not come to urologist and it this tumor has a very high potential of invasiveness and uh, they come to urology when they uh, already have the invasive uh, cancer and sorry here uh, 45 to 65 percent of invasive um, cancer can be combined with carcinoma in situ and 7 to 15 uh, papilla um, tumors uh, can be combined with this and we should not have the hyperdiagnostics here because if we have a real carcinoma in situ two-thirds of patients uh, they have uh, uh, the carcinoma uh, in situ in the bladder and also the prostate glands can uh, can be suffering from it and after that we have the tactics of uh, treatment um, and um, we cannot perform any inner blood chemotherapy. Uh, that is why if you are sure that this is a carcinoma in situ, do not make such a diagnosis. It is not important how many layers of, la of uh, cellular carcinoma in situ 
uh, metals can be at different levels. This is the uh, stand which cannot be uh, overseen, but there can be different uh, variants like pigetoid. It reminds of the cancer of pegetoid gland with uh, local uh, tumor cells. It can be a naked cystoid. This can uh, a small cell, big cell variant. Another thing, uh, uh, this is the involvement of von Braun and Cystitis cystica. This is not invasion. This is uh, the carcinoma in situ of the of von Braun units. Uh, these are different variants of carcinoma in situ within the so-called naked cystis. Cystid. At high grade processes, the cells have low cohesion. They just uh, move from each other. We can see this naked basal membrane. This is a good material because all the cells are in the urine and uh, on the uh, uh, micro slide we will see like small uh, small cells uh, here is a pigetoid variant and carcinoma in situ in the triangle area we can see the differentiation of carcinoma This is carcinoma in situ with involvement of von Braun units. If we look at these two uh, types uh, of the papillar units, uh, here is uh, uh, repeating in uh, almost in almost half of cases and progressing to the anaplasia. Um, Great. So the stage it can come from T A to T one. The papilloma can it cannot give to the T one. This is hyperdiagnostics. Hyper hyper diagnostic of panel and P and hyperdiagnostics of P U C L G. The urologists. Uh, urologists write that uh, the repeating and progression in pan LMP is even higher than in PUCLG. This is our error. If we diagnose cancer, then there is a, a intrablader or chemotherapy. So please be very careful about these diagnostics when you're not sure this is um, much more evidential that there is a PUCLG final MP than PUCLG and the survival rate is here this is the lo uh, the bottom line and here is high grade papillar urotelial cancer it can uh, change into invasive or muscle invasive you can check the activities of your lab you should have uh, the following range T8 stage T8 stage 70% T1 20% and in C2 approximately 10% once uh, the oncologist and urologist some say that it is impossible I shall not name I should not name the um, uh, the lab which provided such diagnostics here is the stage TA this is non-invasive papillar cancer but 
this should be gradated very accurately. T1 stature. These can be uh, uh, certain cellars, certain clusters of cells. All these are wide layers till the um, uh, muscle cover. But there can be some um, hidden problems. We can see sometimes the artifacts, retra uh, retraction artifacts, and something that these are emboles and uh, limb vessels. They, but emboles can be found at T1 stage very, very rarely. But first, when you want to say that it's embol, we should prove that this is not the artifact. Here is micro-invasion in lamina propria. This is the uh, real invasion. There are sub-stages of T1. If you're interested in this, you can uh, ask me privately. See. Here is the morphological conclusion on material of uh, trans-urine uh, resection. This is the lesion, papular or uh, uh, surface. Uh, uh, then the uh, malignant uh, grade. Uh, then the um, presence or the lack of muscle layer if you do not try that there is a muscle layer then you uh, just make that the patient will have a red tour the so please pay attention to the uh, to the muscle layer and uh, just Put down that there is muscle layer particles. The uh, presence and the depth of invasion, uh, the presence of carcinome in situ, and the ambilymphatic invasion. Thank you for your attention. This brilliant presentation. Do you have any questions? Uh, the question is not through the mic. The papillar tumor. It is not a cancer, in accordance with the morphological classification. But the number of uh, repeats is almost the same as by the put by the penises. And there should be active uh, monitoring, and there can be retours because the. Uh, ritual can uh, be repeated again and again. The tumor and the or the lack of tumor of the cancer. I'm not a pathomorphologist and it doesn't give uh, give us an opportunity for for the treatment because there can be some uh, complications. It is, uh, so we cannot take that into treatment. It is against our protocols. Well, I could speak about this for a very long time because it is widely dis discussed. It is very rare. For example, as for me, I. I work with big in bigger uh, establishments. Maybe I had just uh, five or six uh, real s variants. There is a hyperdiagnostics due to the hyperdiagnostics of papillar urethelial cancer. I changed. I have changed this uh, chart recently. The morphologists did not see the. Uh, uh, essence. They do not understand what is papular urethelial tumor. When I started to work, uh, my 
bosses uh, told me it doesn't matter what is papilloma or cancer imagine imagine the urologists are not interested in this and we write that uh, papilloma with invasion this papilloma Uh, we usually speak about the high grade. It's now, but before I speak about what was before, we did not understand what papilloma was. A real papilloma repeats in less than one percent of cases, so we need to upgrade the morphology diagnostics. Uh, urologists should be engaged with uh, urinologists. Thank you. Thank you, Nina.